Hi there, I'm Andy from Roland. We're here today at Absolute Music and we're going to take a look at the sequencer that is in the Phantom. And uh, what's great about the, the sequencer in the Phantom is it's very quick to get ideas down. We, uh, we all work at home, we work with computers and DAWs, which are great for really, really in-depth recording. But sometimes you just want to quickly capture an idea and start building up a bit of an arrangement. And the, the new pattern sequencer that's in the Phantom is perfect for that. So uh, I've put a few sounds together and uh, we're going to make a few patterns and show you how quick it is to get something down. Okay, so we're going to start by making a, uh, a drum pattern to go with it. So I'm just going to go over to a blank pattern that I've got set up. So I'm going to go back to C and I have created a couple of sounds so far. So I'm going to go into my zone view. So in zone view, you can see up to 16 sounds at once, but I'm just going to focus on four for the start here. And I've selected a couple of sounds. So I've got a CR78 drum kit. And um, we could record it uh, as a straight way, just in a pattern by playing you know, a beat in. But what's really great is we have a TR sequencer on the front here. So just like on the Roland TR8S drum machine, uh, we can put in patterns straight away here and it's very quick to get something down. So I go to TR rec mode and I choose my bass drum and I just put in the beats where I want them to be and press play. Now I've already set the tempo on this to be 95, but you can set it to be whatever you want. Just set it back to 95. And uh, if I want to add something else on top of that, I say choose my snare. You see that the, the screen changes whatever instrument I'm playing. So if I go back to kick, I see the pattern that I've put in for the kick. And here we see uh, for the snare. So I hit 5 and 13, so we've got it on the offbeat. And I'm going to put in some claps as well. And I'm also going to put in some hi-hats. And what we can do as well, at the moment that you see the scaling is set in 16th notes, but if I wanted to make it a bit more interesting, I could set it to be in 32nd notes and put in a sub-step. So if I put one here on number eight, you'll see it puts in a sub-step on here. So when I play the pattern now, we get a nice little roll, which is really cool. So that's cool. So we've got our drum pattern going now, which is if I press the pattern on the sequencer section, we can see now we have a drum pattern and it's one bar long. and that'll just cycle around. So now I can choose one of my other instruments. So I've set up on uh, channel one, I've got this harp sound. And uh, I'm just gonna, I can put in my own sort of like a, a, a part on top of this. So uh, I could, if I wanted to program it actually in the TRX thing, but for this one, we're just gonna play it in normally. So if I hit record, this takes me to my real time record standby screen. So I've set up a couple of parameters on here. I've set up so that I have a counting of one measure, which means that it'll give me a counting of four before it starts recording. Uh, I'm also gonna put loop switch record on. So if I don't get everything in the first take, it'll go round and I can keep recording. Uh, I'm also gonna set it to be a uh, mix if I wanted to uh, continue layering up over the top of it. And also this one here for input quantize, I'm gonna put this on so that it quantizes my performance to the grid. And uh, I'm just gonna set the strength to be 50%. So it keeps a bit of that human feel, which is cool. So uh, I've set the length to four bars, and then when we start, when I press start, we'll start recording. So that's gone in there now. So I've got my four bar loop going. So that's cool, and uh, I can play both of these patterns at the same time, so they're all in column A. But if I wanted to, I can keep adding layers. So I can go to track two, and actually I've got uh, the same harp sound again, but I want to write a different part on this one. So uh, I'm going to hit record again. Straight away, you can just get going. You can see I made a bit mistake there. So if I want to delete it, very easy to do that. Hit pattern utility, delete, delete that one. And I can try again. Cool, so now I've got three parts going on there. 
And it's okay as a little loop, but uh, I want to add a bass line to it so it has a bit more of a movement. So I've got a bass sound on here, which I'm just going to octave down. And I'm going to hit record again. But this time, instead of a four bar loop, I'm going to put this one to eight so I can write something a bit longer. So one. Okay, so I've got my first four parts now, and if I wanted to add a uh, an extra part, so I've gone to part six here, and I've got this sort of AT sound, uh, a Juno Polystack uh, synth part. So if I hit record, again, I'm gonna make this eight bars, so I can keep in time with the bass line, hit start, and we can start recording again. What's cool is because now on the left hand side on here I have the mixer for my part so I can say take the volume of that one down so it's so there's a little bit more in the background a little bit more in the background there and uh, not getting in the way with what we're doing and then also I have a pad sound here which is quite nice atmospheric but I want it I don't want it to be as slow fading in so I've got my quick access controls for my synth over here so I've got my amp envelope so I can just quickly grab the attack and now that's a little bit more immediate. So I can use this to write a bit of a solo part over the top of it. So if I wanted to, I can just play it so I can figure out what I want to do. That's okay, so I, when I'm happy with that, I hit record. Again, I'm gonna set this to be eight bars. And this is a really nice thing, actually, that you can have all these different patterns working, and they can all be different part, like uh, different lengths as well, which is cool. So I hit start. Okay, so we've got a few ideas now down, and uh, this is what's really good about the Phantom, is it's very quick just to get little loops going so that you can get the ideas down as they come to you. And then if you wanted to, we can sort of start by building up a bit of an arrangement. So at the bottom here, we have a thing called pattern utility. So for instance, if I wanted to have a few things, I might not want uh, everything playing at the same time. So uh, if I go to pattern utility, I can then copy and paste a few different things. So I can go to my, my drum pattern, I can copy that and uh, I can then go to the section underneath it and paste it so that it's on its own. And maybe I'll just take the bass line with that as well. And we'll copy that and uh, we'll paste that there. And uh, I'm gonna do uh, those again actually, just so I've got them underneath. And same again for the drums. And I'm also going to copy these first two parts as well. So I'm going to copy that first heart part down to number three. And same again for number two. Cool. So if I just go out of pattern utility, so now that I've got a different selections of patterns, I could just launch, uh, I could step, start everything on number B if I wanted to. just to get something going initially. And then I could also uh, hit C, and it plays those four together. So what's quite cool is now that we've got these different parts together, if I wanted to build that into a bit of a song, I can specify these uh, sort of grouping. So for instance, everything that I've got going in B, if I hit grouping, I can now uh, group these together. If I uh, set this to group one, and I'm just gonna rename that, so I can rename uh, this as my intro, hit OK. 
and uh, then say underneath this, those four, pat four patterns together, I'm going to group those uh, to group two, set that, and then I'm going to rename that to be uh, verse, and then finally, everything working together, I'm going to set that grouping for number three, and I'm going to call this uh, to be my chorus. Cool. So uh, if I go to my groups now to look at these, so one thing actually that we also need to change is that the length is set to be one bar at the moment. So for instance, if I go to my intro, so my drum pattern, yeah, that's one bar, but actually the bass line I've written is eight bars. So I want to make sure that I stretch that out to be eight. So I just change the length down here. Likewise, because the length of my bass line is eight, I need to change that for my verse and also for my chorus as well. So now if I were to launch a particular group, uh, if, so if I just wanted to hear the verse part, I can hear it from here, and it just plays it for me. But what's great is now I can sequence these in order to make a bit of a song. So that's great about the Phantom is it's very quick to get ideas down, but you can then group them together to make a, a song. So what's great about the Phantom is it's quick to get your ideas down, uh, layer things up together, and then you can sort of split them up and, and create a song out of it. So if I go to Make Song, so on here, this is the structure of my song on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side, I have the, the, uh, the groups that we've just made. So if I wanted to add in my intro, I press Add, oops, not twice, and it adds in the intro once, so it'll play that full eight bars one time. And then I could go to my verse, and I could add that in, and then I could go to my chorus as well, click Add, that brings in. And then you can use this to structure your song. So for instance, then I want to go back to the verse, but maybe I want it twice. And then I can also have a chorus, and an intro, um, whatever you like really. And uh, you've got a huge number of groups that you can do. You can do 16 at the same time, so you can have 16 different sections going on. So this is great. And uh, when now I uh, go to my song on here, so if I was doing a particular performance or anything like that, I just hit play. And you can see on the screen here that it's uh, going through that pattern and when it reaches the end, it'll then move on to the next section. I'm not gonna play the whole song here, but just so you can hear a bit of a transition. So that's cool. And what's ace about the, the Phantom, so now if I hit right and uh, save my scene, uh, which I've just called it some pattern demo, is uh, that there's no modes in the Phantom. So on a lot of workstations, you are uh, you know stuck in either single part mode or dual mode, split sound. With the Phantom, it's brilliant that in the scene mode, you can have up to 16 sounds and it's all quick to get going. So if I go between different scenes, as soon as I come back to that pattern demo, hit play, and it's already loaded in my song straight away. So it's a really fantastic and quick way uh, to get a pattern down and get your ideas for making your own songs. So thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's been useful for you. Uh, if you'd like any more information about The Phantom, please visit Absolute Music and don't forget to like and subscribe to the Absolute Music channel. Thanks again, bye.